Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, October 8, 2021. The Ministry of Health and Wellness says a shipment of the Pfizer brand vaccine is expected to arrive in the island by month end. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Besesa mckenzie made the announcement yesterday. We are expecting supplies from the United States and from COVAX. While we have no definite date on the arrival of the U.S. supply, the COVAX supply is expected in two to four weeks and will be enough to cover the second doses. Dr. Bisesa McKenzie added that despite the circumstances of a delay in the shipment of the Pfizer vaccine, those persons due their second dose are still within the time frame recommended by the WHO to receive the jab. Starting on Saturday, persons will be in the sixth week after the first dose. We want to advise persons that they will receive the second dose as soon as we receive supplies. They do not have to panic they will not have to start over the course. We want to reassure persons that they have some immunity and they will get the vaccine as soon as it arrives. Recommendations from the WHO for the second dose of the Pfizer vaccine is 21 to 28 days. However, the organization also acknowledges a wait period of up to 12 weeks. Meanwhile, Dr. Bisesa McKenzie noted that there are sufficient doses of AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccines in the country to continue both first and second doses. She said some 76,000 persons are due their second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine this month. In addition, another 100,000 persons have due dates before October. October 1. She encouraged all persons who have passed their due date of October 1 for their second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine to visit a vaccination site as soon as possible. The Southern Regional Health Authority, SARA, has gifted $9 million to support the fight against COVID-19. The donation, courtesy of J. Ray & Nephew Limited, is a part of the company's intervention to disperse $45 million to 12 public hospitals across the island. The Mandeville Regional Hospital in Manchester received $4 million, while the Maypen Hospital in Clarendon and Black River Hospital in St. Elizabeth received $2 million each. And the Balaclava and Magatee Health Centers received a donation of $500,000 each. Regional Director for SARA, Michael Bent, in expressing gratitude for the donation, said that the monies will be used to purchase small equipment and medical supplies for the facility's continued management of the COVID-19 pandemic. Cabinet has given approval for the amendment of the Bank of Jamaica Act to facilitate the issuance of a central bank digital currency. The news was revealed by Information Minister Favel Williams during this week's post-Cabinet press briefing. Approval has also been given for the bank to be the sole authority to issue the digital currency. Digital innovation has led to the birth of alternative payment instruments, prompting central banks across the world to embark on exploratory projects to study the potential for issuing a central bank-backed digital currency. The BOJ is driving the process for the use of digital currency across Jamaica. The Information Minister also said that Cabinet gave approval for the issuance of drafting instructions to the Chief Parliamentary Council. Meanwhile, Jamaica will soon have a revamped national border security policy and strategy which seeks to strengthen immigration and maritime domain capacities. Cabinet granted the approval for the development of the policy, which will be conducted through the creation of a strategic, multi-sectoral framework to address security risks within Jamaica. The development of the national border security policy and strategy will be spearheaded by a policy steering committee that will be constituted for a period of 24 months. And finally, the second largest cruise line in the world, Royal Caribbean International, will resume limited operations to Jamaica in November. Royal Caribbean has informed that once a number of logistical matters, some of which are outside Jamaica's remit, are effectively resolved, they will be bringing in tens of thousands of fully vaccinated cruise visitors to the island. Royal Caribbean's intention was relayed to Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett during a recent meeting with executives of the cruise line in Florida. Royal Caribbean also expressed a strong desire to employ thousands of Jamaicans across a range of job functions. Minister Bartlett has thanked the cruise line for the plans in place to recommence sailings to Jamaica after more than a year and a half hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The new development follows another meeting led by Minister Bartlett with Carnival Corporation, the largest cruise company in the world, where they shared plans for 110 or more cruises with more than 200,000 fully vaccinated visitors to come to Jamaica over the next few months. The cruise industry was among the worst affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, shutting the industry down for more than a year. 
And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.